Welcome to the Sports Show. Mike, Max, Becker, Royce, John Krasinski, Pete Nigerian, Sid Hartman with a hard-earned day off. His uh, good friend and business partner, Al Rubinger, passing away. And Sid uh, with the family today. So our thoughts and prayers go out to that entire family. Sid's best friend. Al Rubinger, easily the sanest fellow in that in that partnership. Yeah, the that real partnership. <laughs> Great guy, Al Rubin. Well, they put some deals together over the years. <laughs> they, they took care of their apartments. <laughs> Fun, a lot to talk about this week that we didn't see coming. Let's start with the twins and Terry Ryan. Uh, Patrick, I, I guess a lot of people thought at the end of the year, nobody yeah. saw in the middle of the year. What were your thoughts? Well, I think it's easy as Terry was walking around for three weeks and being asked questions about next year, and he knew he wasn't going to be back, and he just couldn't take it anymore. He's, a, you know, the one thing everybody can say about him is he's honest and ethical and he just didn't he finally came to him last Friday and said hey let's get this over with because he didn't want to be you know he does that 630 thing with the reporters yeah. every day and everybody's asking him about next season and he's he got sick of you know basically lying having to lie yep. and uh, that's that surprise I, th I thought they'd I didn't think they'd even bring it up to him until I think uh, we got a lot of uh, we got a lot of influence from the business department uh, ticket sales are disaster. So. John, what did you think of the press conference? It was, it was this kind of, not off the record, but Jim Polad speaks, yeah. and, and then it, it was just different. It was different. We're used to, especially when you make a move that big with a, a figure as huge as Terry Ryan has been, it's all, there's always the cameras there. There's always someone that is you know, standing up and, and taking his medicine and, and giving the explanation, and we didn't have that. For, for this huge major move that the Twins never make in season. So I, I thought that the camera should have been allowed in. I thought that it was... But you could understand when you once you heard what Jim Polad was saying why they wanted to keep him off camera because there were a couple comments in there that just made you raise your eyebrows and scratch your head yeah, and say, what's yeah, going on Jim, here? Jim's not quite polished enough. I want him and Ziggy. I want to promote his debate between him and Ziggy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the thrilling vanilla all over again, baby. All the money those two have. Yeah. All the be, money those two have. Yeah. You can't buy something. You but, can't yeah. buy public speaking. Yeah. So, it was, yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. Pete, you work in the business climate, sports yeah. climate. How important is leadership from where you sit? You oh. see it both in Wall Street and in the sports. Right. It, it, it's massive. And, and, and Terry's biggest issue was when the Twins finally did get Target Field built. They had their own facility. Then it became a business. Before that, it wasn't as much a business. It was more sports, and GMs have to do both. And I think the problem is with the lack of success and the idea that this spring, everybody was promised this team is going to win. This team has got potential to be in the playoffs. This team could maybe even go a little deeper. All of those promises, and then you see what's on the field right now, unfortunately, it was set up for an, a situation like exactly what happened, right. which is the business side is not coming along the way it should. Great evaluator of talent. Everybody knows that. But the problem is you have to produce. You don't produce, it doesn't last too long in the business world. Where do they go, Patrick, in your mind? Uh, I think uh, a guy like Ben Sherrington, uh, who was supposed to be an extremely bright guy, you know, he got the took the fall in Boston for Pablo Sandoval and some of those guys, but that's just because... If he owner, put this team on the field, yeah, he did pretty good. That's just because ownership was saying... You know, do something. Right. Get get Spend somebody some in there. We finished last, so somebody like Sherrington. Uh, you know what? Could be really creative. Kim Ng, the uh, she's at baseball. Now, she's at baseball now, but she was the Dodgers interviewed her. A lot of people have interviewed her. Nobody's taken the jump, but they people tell me she's absolutely brilliant. So, but they're. You know, Rob Anthony, God love him, nobody likes him better than me, but you cannot fire Terry Ryan and then say, oh, by the way, we're doing the same thing. You, yeah. you, you got to give him a new front office. Well, John, yeah. part of it was, you know, that I think surprised all of us when he sat there that day where he said Paul Maldery back in 2017, right. nothing against Paul, but right. everybody assumed that the GM gets the authority. Yeah, I think that was the question is no one, I think, is saying that Paul should be fired for sure, but the, whoever is bringing, who you're going to bring in should have the final say in that and should be able to say, uh, these are who I want, not only in my front office, Office, but also as the manager on the field and it, if you're going to get the top of the line the cream of the crop g candidates to come forward you would think that one of their conditions would be I got to be able to pick my guy and so maybe one of the, maybe Ben Sherrington would like to work with Paul Molitor but you at least have to give him the option before you lay down this edict and say absolutely Paul Molitor well, is coming back. Plus yeah. that's another Jim Polad you don't say it even if it's gonna right. be one of your rules exactly. you say when you're interviewing him you say by the way uh, we, three years ago, begged Molitor to take the job. The family loves him, and we want him to get yeah. one more year. So. And Glenn Taylor did not tell, did not say publicly, 
to Tom, when he hired Tom Thibodeau that Ryan Saunders had to stay, but that was one of the things that was understood quietly. And, one of the conditions. And one of the things, but yeah, exactly. It goes back to Jim kind of shooting his, himself in the foot with publicly when he's opened his mouth here, and it just it's just a, an, another thing that brings more criticism onto a franchise that doesn't need any of it and right even, now. And even in his attempts at humor, because I think the lovable <laughs> quote was yeah. an attempt, what do you want your general manager right. to be? And he said lovable, because he attempts to be wry, mm -hmm. but he's so wry and he's so bad in front of the camera, but everybody just, <laughs> nobody can, nobody can imagine he's actually trying to be funny. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You need to know you're trying to be funny yeah. to be funny. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you're right, David Adelman, I talked to the other day, he's going down to Orlando, I think, mm -hmm. Pinckney will be in by the end of the week. Pete, do you see in companies or, that you can do it by committee, or does there always have to be one in charge? Somebody's got to make the decisions. It, you ever see where it works well by committee? Uh, no, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I go into the financial world where I am right now. You look at somebody like Jamie Dimon. One of the best-run financial institutions in the world is J.P. Morgan. And why? Because Jamie Dimon's running this thing. You look at something like Starbucks, and you see a guy like Howard Schultz. You go down the line of the best-run companies and sports franchises, there is somebody who makes all the decisions. They they make the decisions, everybody, uh, and they make all the hires. They make a lot of the major, major hires, rather, that put them in the position where they need to go in the direction they want to be pushed. But you better be able to set the culture. You better set that culture, and it better happen in a hurry. Or you're gone. And in Wall Street, it's a much quicker run even than it yeah, is on the, on the It's a quarter world. by quarter, right? Yeah. Patrick, it was fun to watch him at Fenway a couple times this week. Oh, man. What uh, a fun ballpark to watch. Reminded me of a doubleheader I covered there in 77 when they had 35 hits in two games. Oh, uh, but that four team hours. had Bostock, Heisel, and Carew. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, four hours and 11 minutes. We might have Ooh. played the doubleheader in four Ooh, hours yeah. and 11 minutes. Four yeah, hours and 11 minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, Boston's... Uh, It'll be interesting who goes and gets Chris Sale. Chris Sale, you're my hero, by the way. <laughs> Those uniforms do stink, and I would have cut them up, too. For Sometimes you just got to tell the man to go to hell. Right. <laughs> Quick comment on that. Chris Sale, if you really don't know, picture of the White Sox, schedule the pitch, sees they got to throw back uniforms, cuts his up. Cuts, <laughs> cuts say, everybody go else's up. Go home. Would you do that to your ace? Well, I, I'm not sure sure I would. If he's your ace, he's your ace, man. Go with this guy. Let him do his thing. He cut the uniforms. you got to say goodbye. Somebody always, say. somebody he says you always gotta listen to your boss unless you're Chris Sale. Right. You know, yeah. then, you're, <laughs> then you're too valuable. It's a different boss. <laughs> Take a break. Come back. <laughs> the Sports Show is brought to you in part by Cambria, makers of quality quartz surfaces. Ticket King for the best price on tickets anywhere. Try Ticket King. RSM. This is the power of being understood. This is RSM. BMW of Minnetonka. Choose from 60 certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. And Bobby and Steve's Auto World. Go to bobbyandstevesautoworld.com for huge savings on everything from convenience store items to everything under the hood of your car. A future. You think we have a future? Barnett, the only Twin Cities Kia dealer with a million mile warranty. Right now, get up to six thousand off select new Optima models, or lease a 2016 Optima for as low as one sixty five a month with zero down. At Highway sixty one in White Bear Lake, online at barnettkia.com. Wait, what? Let's let the announcer guy do it. Barnett. Need your GED to get a better job and start a new career? Summit Academy's one-of-a-kind program combines GED with your choice of healthcare or construction training. Summit Academy. There are no loans and absolutely no cost to you. Get your GED now and start a healthcare or construction career, too. Not much could ruin today. Hi! He put dog poop in my Mork and Mindy lunchbox. I've got to get to the wall! Tomorrow, starting at 9 on CW23. 
An odometer under 15,000 miles and an up to five year 75,000 mile warranty makes it elite. The way it does this makes it a BMW. Introducing BMW Certified Pre-Owned Elite. Choose from 60 certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. Looking for a nice, big, juicy rack of ribs, fabulous chops, huge steaks, and the buddy bowl? Then J.D. Hoyt's is the place for you. Hoyt's opened in 1983, and Mike Andrews and his partner John White have kept this Minnesota tradition at the top of the food chain. Managing owner Pat Montague gives us a tour. At J.D. Hoyt's, enjoy a relaxed atmosphere, great food, friendly service, private dining room, second-to-none happy hour just blocks from the new ballpark. Located at 394 in North Washington, locally owned, nationally known, Hoyt's. Coming downtown Minneapolis, stop by J.D. Hoyt's Supper Club. Yeah, get some of that uh, chopped steak, seafood, and say hi to Pat along the way. Great uh, sports talk at J.D. Hoyt's. Welcome back to the show. There's a new Viking Stadium. Uh, I spent enough time there the last couple of days. Uh, what, what, Patrick, can I say one thing? I haven't been in there. You I'm haven't? waiting for the prep bowl. But, uh, uh, I hope you're there before that. Who is stupid enough to put all these big glass windows up there and say, and I'm going to put some big rocks out here in front. <laughs> you know, if I'm a 25-year-old kid who smoked a little dope in my life, what am I going to do? Yeah. I'm going to throw the rock through the window. And who it put happened. the windows, rocks there? Uh, I, I hadn't thought about that. They I, thought they thought yeah, everything. I, I, too tempting. Too tempting. I talked to Mark Wilf about that earlier this week, and he's just like, I just thought they looked nice. I didn't, I didn't think anyone wanted to throw it through there. And that's just like, come on, Mark. Big it's hole. Like, oh, totally now crestfallen. That, now that the protesters and people know how easy it is. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's right there. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I it's, thought it was a goose at first, but it wasn't. John, did you go to the tour? I did. I did. I was there for three days last week. It's, hey, it's a billion-dollar stadium. There's a lot of cynicism around it and about public-private partnership mm -hmm. and all the money. <laughs> but you walk in there, and it's darn nice. I mean, it's, it's, It should be, and it is. Yeah, it should be, and it is. I think, I think they did it right. I think uh, the, the natural light, all the openness of the concourses, the locker room's beautiful. Our press box is actually in the building. I thought they'd put us across the street or, or, or something like that. Right. So, uh, we have yeah, stairs. Right, yeah, That's but it, it's, it's nice. So... Uh, the whole thing is, it's it's a really nice, I mean, you, you put, I talked to Kyle Rudolph and he said between the Metrodome and the and the uh, <laughs> U.S. Bank, it's filet mignon and chuck, ground yeah. chuck. So it's uh, it's it's a whole nother world. Hey, Pete. Yeah. What? Now the Nigerians have had to be <laughs> ticket holders since 61. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So uh, what, uh, what, what is the tab now, not only for the seat license, <laughs> but the seat Let itself? He hasn't even looked at that no, as a system no, base. This ESL thing is just, to me, it's crazy. But it's been going on forever, and yeah. they've been able to get away with it. Now all of us right. have to fall in line. Well, and that's I got to think Doc is. had pretty good seats. Doc has always had good seats. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you're, you're in the 9500. <laughs> seat well, license I can, area. I can only tell you that when Dad, when we moved here, that was one of the priorities. He yeah. had to have go for football, go for <laughs> basketball, and he had to have Vikings, and he wanted to be on the 50. So we've always had great seats for Vikings. But I will tell you this. I've been in just about every stadium that's been built in, in the NFL in the last 20 years or thereabouts. And this is... If it takes a second, and I'm not so positive it does, it's only to Dallas. Because if you go out to San Francisco, beautiful stadium, this is nicer. Yeah, oh, I was there, you, and you're right. It's right. Same with Phoenix. Right. Phoenix beautiful stadiums. Is. Now, Atlanta, they'll probably compete with us pretty sure. nice, I, I, I think. because I LA, think what they're who knows? And L.A. could be spectacular. Yeah. But right now, as it stands, that Dallas stadium, and I, I was fortunate enough to go to a game there. Jerry yeah. Jones invited me and my brother down. We sat in his booth. It's unbelievable. What was he like? Uh, he's great. During the game. I love him. Well, he goes upstairs <laughs> with his sons, and they... Oh, I see he's got like a couple different. Oh, he's in the headset, huh? <laughs> well, let's be I mean, we all know how it works. But uh, but this stadium is fan friendly. It's it, uh, the Vikings have figured it out, and they did a lot of the things that that they did down in Dallas. And they've got the fans, and you walk through as a player, you walk through there, and it's not you're not tracking a mile from the locker room. It's right out from the locker room. You get out onto the field. I think it's spectacular, and the natural lighting, as yep. you say. I mean, there's actually I've seen a lot of people talking about the lighting and how it's going to change around noon and the kickoff time and how it's going to be sort of a strategy that
that the Vikings will have a slight advantage on that whole thing. It, it is funny because I talked to Mike Zimmer about that. Yeah. And Mike Zimmer is a classic coach, right? Great He's guy. worried about, Great. okay, locker room to there. How long does it take? What's the lighting going to be like? <laughs> well, how's that going to change if the punt and blah, blah? I mean, you, you know what? He's living right. here. He just wants to know how to get the competitive advantage. Right. What do you think, Zimmer? Uh, I think he's great. I think what they did in the offseason this year, the Minnesota Vikings, they, they did what they needed to do to add to get themselves past where they reached last year. And obviously, we all know the unfortunate missed field goal at the end of the season. That was a tough way to a tough break. I don't know if we'd have gotten past Carolina. This team that they've got now, if they can compete at the same level they did last year with the addition on the offensive line, I think they not only can compete with Carolina, Seattle, and anybody else, I think they have a real legitimate shot, especially Teddy in a, in a dome, I think, is a huge advantage for Teddy throwing the football. Patrick? Uh, it's the NFL. Who gets hurt? You know, that's, that's a lot of it. Who right. gets hurt? And, and if the uh, quarterback gets hurt. Yeah. In the offensive line, they added some guys that uh, the, the statistical people tell you are on the downslide, but they should be better. They got about eight or nine of them now, right. so they got options. You're not going to need T.J. Clemmings to play every 16 games, so uh, they should be better. John? Yeah, I think, I mean, the big thing, and it's easy to say about watching Teddy and seeing what that progression yeah. is, I mean, if he can make plays down the field a little bit more than he has the first couple of years, open up a little bit different dimension and take a little bit of the focus away from Adrian, all of a sudden they should be really good, because I think the defense is going to be a heck of a unit this year, and so it could very well be as long as that offense can pull its weight, score 24 points a game, and you see Teddy take that next step, then I think they're going to be in right, in, in right in the end of it, right in the thick of it to the end. I wish he'd take off his surfing gloves and play like a man. <laughs> like a man. I said Alex <laughs> Boone. Ball like a man. <laughs> that Alex Boone I spent some time with again. Yeah. I, I, he's a piece of work, but you know, it goes back to this is kind of right. interesting because I, I started talking to him, and, and his dad was a uh, high end executive who left the family. Yeah. And he never saw him again, really. Yeah. And and, and how this drives him is oh. incredible. I mean, the point being, you see these big, strong guys, yeah. and, and there's a lot of stuff that goes on. Let me tell there. you, that kid comes with attitude. Uh, if yeah. you watched him, he might be on the downside of the of his career, but I'll tell you what, I'd rather have him on the downside than a lot of guys on the upside because this be kid is big guy me. on Mondays after the game yeah. too. Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. Well, you kind of feel like you're talking to Jared Allen, don't you, John? You and I were talking to him yeah. one day out there. Yeah, you know, he has a lot of attitude, a lot of flavor, and. The, all, not just Boone, but then Tony Sperano, the, the yeah. offensive line coach, is a nasty guy. And I think that's what they needed, that that unit didn't have much edge no. to it and not much compete. And I think those two guys will really help change that up. It's going to change Khalil. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to make Khalil suddenly realize, yeah. hey, man, he's I got a nice guy. Yeah, yeah Khalil's just a nice guy. Yeah. He can't be a nice guy. He's mm -hmm. got to be one of those guys that plays well, to the end of the work? whistle. Because his brother's a mean. His yeah. brother yeah. is a mean <laughs> son of a gun. I love his brother, boy. Yeah. Howdy. Yeah. That guy will bring us that work. <laughs> Inside the Vikings, they'll say from time to time that Matt Khalil is a nice guy yep. and super talented. Yep. They wonder sometimes how much he loves football. Mm -hmm. Can you be successful at football if you don't love football, if you're that gifted? Well, I think he's gifted, but I don't know that he loves it, and maybe he has to somehow find that love again because it seemed like it was gone for a while. He came in that first year. I thought he was a pretty yep. daggone good football yep. player. And then he's been sliding a little bit. I think this guy, if he could find that love with Boone and the guys kind of pushing him along, That's maybe they elevate him back Who up. Who yeah. love playing in a league where they don't care if you get the hell beat out of you and they're waiting to steal your money? <laughs> Whatever they can possibly <laughs> steal. You can't love money. that. <laughs> you know, Chad Greenway. One of the great warriors ever. Yep. They steal half his money last year. He plays 400 plays, and they don't give it back to him. Yep. <laughs> That's yep. the NFL. I, I don't know if I'd love it either. Oh, did you know? I didn't know this until. The, but there's a there's a pool of money that each team gets. So if people outperform their contracts, right. they get substantial. Did they give Greenway right. some of it? Well, <laughs> just to give you an example, Adrian Peterson made money on the on the bonus pool because it's based on. But it's really set up for guys like Stephon Diggs. Right. You know. Yep. Yeah. How about like Chad Greenway? Probably. Hey. I mean, I don't know. You know, whatever. There's some formula. He was supposed to play 200 plays. He played play 400. <laughs> Take a break. Come back. change frank same time next week when it drives and looks like new you'll want to treat it like new certified pre-owned by bmw choose from 60 certified pre-owned bmws at bmw of minnetonka you're watching cw23 
Welcome back to the sports show. Denny Green's passing, I think, took a lot of people off guard. He had a heart condition, but we hadn't really followed him that closely. And uh, he'd been in San Diego. And, uh, you know, I covered him throughout. Patrick, you covered him throughout. And uh, there's a lot of good about him. He did a lot of good things. But it was really hard to get to another level with him where you felt like he trusted you. Well, the first three years were fine. And then the uh, sexual harassment yep. story came out. And when that happened, then that was, at least with the columnist, it was war. And uh, to, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, I, me, I personally kind of like to have fun tease him a little bit, uh, I, but uh, a lot of people... You do? Uh, a lot of people went <laughs> you, 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 you like to call. see that. <laughs> but, you, see me, you, but, you know, hey, 98... I mean, that was... Uh, as good as it gets. As it gets. You know what? What is amazing, you look back to 97, they were in the playoffs for the fourth time in five years, and the last game was blacked out. Mm. You ever want to know? Yeah. yeah. Moss. Yeah. People, yeah, people had lost interest. That's right, because and then, Holmes and then Moss. Randy draft, and, then and then Denny drafted Moss. But do you the, remember? 20 years later, we still think we're going to the Super Bowl every McCombs year. did a semi-strange thing when he bought the team. He gave Denny a big contract. Do you remember that? And, and it was after know. 97, before no, 98, and yeah, a lot of people he, said, where'd that come from? But yeah. he, he made some calculated decision that he needed his leader and to then be. And he got rid of Jeff Diamond after 98 yeah. and gave Denny all the power. So he was, uh, you know, I... I don't want to say that uh, you know, it would be hypocritical of me to laud him too much, but uh, you know he certainly. You look at his record: eight, eight first nine years, eight playoffs. Yeah, and great, great football coach. What do you see? Yeah, I, I, I thought he was pretty amazing. And I go back to he was at Northwestern when I was at the University of Minnesota. Sure. He brought a guy named Francis Pay to be his defensive coordinator eventually at Northwestern from Cal, who was the guy who recruited me to come to Cal. Okay, so you knew. So him. I, I have yeah, and I have him. a lot of good friends of mine who played football for him. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the guys is still with the Minnesota Vikings who played for Dennis way back when. But I think the amazing thing about what he was able to accomplish was he managed not just to be able to evaluate talent of players but of coaches. When you look at that staff that he was able to well, put yeah, together over yeah. the years, you got Tom Moore as well. I mean, you've got an Willie all-star Scharr, group of Willie guys. Scharr. Yeah, he's got a great oh, guy. Tyrone Willingham made right. a little run and, and he extended, and all of a sudden, he... Uh, now, I was in Tampa when John Randall got his shot in Tampa, and we didn't see it. Of course we didn't, because we were Tampa Bay. We yeah. were the Yuccaneers. Yeah. So we don't figure it out. He comes to Minnesota. He's kind of hanging around Minnesota for a while. But Denny Green had the foresight to say, you know what, this guy's going to be great, and really started to elevate the playtime for him, along with going for Randy Moss, and his ability to see this in some of the players where other people didn't. I mean, there are 20 other teams that could have drafted Moss, and they all passed on him. That's right. So it's a pretty amazing up. thing. So yep, you were on up. that team that lost to Northwestern where they tore down the goal Does post. he have to bring that up <laughs> and they walked out? Are you teasing <laughs> again? They beat Joe Salem's team in 83, and they tore down the goal post. Are you teasing again? Coach. You know, that was, a, that was a team. We were not only not very good, we were terrible. <laughs> and they tore down that's the same team. Course. Patrick well, always brings up the 84-13. Yeah, 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 he must have Yeah, he was ended there. He three wins. So. Ended the yeah. losing streak. Yeah. yeah, that was really exciting for us to help, well, you help know, them in that but, streak. But you forget, too. <laughs> they carried it down to Lake Michigan. Uh, they carried it to Lake Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Guys are coming out of bars breaking champagne glass, <laughs> and they throw the thing in the lake, and we're all and flying home going. And after that game, Smokey announced he was not going to, that uh, he yeah. was going to quit at the end of the game. But Denny Green was like 33 years old when he got the Northwestern job, so I mean, he was incredibly young, John, to be a head coach. Yeah, I was just a Cub reporter. Yeah. When, when he was here, and my favorite story, Kevin Seifert told it as well. We're in uh, Green Bay in 1999, <laughs> and Favre hits Corey Bradford with a, just a laser uh, touchdown pass, 12 seconds to go. They win the game. Chris Carter is, you know, I was there. He was <laughs> giving it to Jimmy Hitchcock. Jimmy Hitchcock got so beat. So we go yeah. into the press conference afterward. I'm 20 years old. I'm working for the Fargo Forum, and the first question is about it. And then he says, "Ah, that's yesterday's news." <laughs> <laughs> and I just said, "What?" But but what Denny did was deflect oh, yeah. from the players you know, and take it on but, himself. But, but, and I'll and say so. that you're talking about the complicated Denny Green because it, it is when this happened, you begin to go look at the Rolodex and go, "Who should I call?" There are a lot of people that you don't dare call because they just didn't have a good relationship with Denny. Green. Mm -hmm. it, it was hot, cold kind mm -hmm. of thing. Pete, uh, it's, it's lovable having you here, but I wish <laughs> the great man was here tonight so we could ask him about his still <laughs> ongoing theory that Denny resigned and did not get <laughs> fired. And then Red gave him $5 million. <laughs> the cheapest owner we ever had said, ah, what the hell? Here's $5 million. And, and, and then it goes into the story about Denny told him, yeah. but he didn't dare print it. So yeah, I could, uh, yeah, take a break, come back. <laughs> If you guys could go on a free shopping spree anywhere, where would you go? I'd go to the grocery store. Pizza, ice cream. 
I go shop for clothes. You know where I go? I go to Ticket King. Ticket King! At Ticket King, you can buy great seats for the Vikings, the Wild, the Timberwolves, and of course, the Twins. We, we love the Twins! Yes, this is where I go. Vikings, Twins, Wild, Timberwolves, Gophers, Theater, and Concerts, too. For details, go to TicketKingOnline.com. Any ticket, anytime, anywhere. It's the real thing. It's Ticket King. Right, Dad? Couldn't have said it any better myself. That's, That's for right. sure. Every step without hesitation. Anticipate your next move with certainty. Because our trusted advisors help you prepare for challenges specific to your business. Our focus is always on you, so your focus is always forward. Experience the power of being understood. RSL, audit, tax, and consulting for the middle market. You're watching CW23. <laughs> Welcome back to the sports show. Go for football, not Man, far away. Not what far do away. you see? I see a team that, uh, even though they come back from the Big Ten meetings and everybody doesn't really see this team really competing at the level I think they can, because of the schedule, because of what they've been able to do in, in terms of bringing in some of these JC transfers on the offensive line, they've gotten a lot me bigger. Big key. They've gotten bigger and meaner up front. I guarantee you that. Bart meaner Miller has, key, he's right? got, yeah, meaner. And there, there are a lot of guys who play like Alex Boone. These guys will hit you until the end of the whistle and maybe a little beyond that. So what I like about what they've done is they filled holes, we got great running backs. I like Leidner when he's got time to throw the football and there's some talent on the outsides. That Brandon Lincoln, the tight end, he will be a superstar. That kid had a great year last Max year. Max Williams this, like her. I think he's a Max Williams and then maybe even beyond. Really? Yeah, mm. yeah. this wow. kid is really something special. Wow. What Quickly. Think, well, if I mean, it, it, if it's ever going to happen, this is the year, right? With the schedule, I mean, it all lays out right in front of them. So it's important for Tracy to get off on the right foot here, maybe get even more contract security going forward. But the way the schedule works out, they better win a bunch of games. They better. Final thought, Patrick, give us something on the Olympics. Simone Biles is going to be the superstar, the gymnast, the uh, oh. four foot ten gymnastics uh, star. Uh, Johnny's going to be there. I'll be there. And, You're going to be uh, there. I will. She's going to be the uh, superstar of the Olympics. I'll she bring, might win five gold medals. I'll bring back some Zika for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If we don't invite you for a long time, yeah. we just want to make sure. Good to see you both. Thanks Thank so you. much Good for coming you, in. Thanks. You it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll do it again next week, the sports show. Thank you for watching us. Next week, same time, same place. Have a good week, everybody. Why am I taking this off the show? The Sports Show is brought to you in part by Cambria, makers of quality quartz surfaces. Ticket King. For the best price on tickets anywhere, try Ticket King. RSM. This is the power of being understood. This is RSM. BMW of Minnetonka. Choose from 60 certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. And Bobby and Steve's Auto World. Go to bobbyandstevesautoworld.com for huge savings on everything from convenience store items to everything under the hood of your car. Applying for Social Security Disability? Get help. Call the Law Office of Robert Hoagland, the largest disability law firm in Minnesota. A Social Security attorney will meet with you in your home or at an office location near you. No fees unless we win. As America's longest-lasting pickups, Ram's continued leadership is eye-opening. Like Ram 3500 with the best towing and the best torque. And Ram 1500 with the best fuel economy. It's no wonder more people are driving Ram trucks than ever before. 
Join us now during the Ram Summer Clearance.